Have you ever had a deep fried chocolate bar? No. <gasps> it's a taste sensation. I had a bounty bar. Do have a picture of it. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Look at that. It's just to die for because it melts the chocolate. What's the white stuff? It's a bounty. Oh, it's a bounty, isn't it? Oh my. No, not for me, thank you. <laughs> it really doesn't do it justice. <laughs> Any chance we're not shopping? Certainly, I'll be down now. Number two! Uh-oh, here we go. For those arrested and placed under lock and key... Give me the best you've got now. Come on, son, let's have it. Birchin Way Custody Facility in Grimsby is like no other. We've moved along with the times, you know, we've left the old dungeons behind. This state-of-the-art, £14 million facility is the first of its kind. So I am authorising your detention here, as uncomfortable as it might be, because it's obviously not the Hilton. It's situated in one of the most deprived areas in the country. Oh, my God. Get me some air plugs, will you? <laughs> Over 6,000 detainees come through the doors every year. A couple of hours and there'll be somebody else in this room. It's a bit like one of your busiest hotels, really. Where's my f***ing dad? Got to be a long night for you, boys. It may be a challenge. I can't hear you because you put poo in the intercom. But these unsung heroes... It smells a bit fresh. ..have a groundbreaking approach to deal with new detainees. Heroin and crack at 80 quid a day. Do you want any help with that? Not to pay for it. No, not to pay for it, no. <laughs> Just because they've been arrested doesn't mean to say that they've committed an offence. So we're going to treat them as customers rather than as criminals. Lobster thermidor, filet mignon in a sauce bernaise. Newspapers. And if successful, it will be rolled out across the UK. What would you rate us on TripAdvisor? Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten, that'll do for me. What be moment. It's early morning at Birchin Way Custody Facility. Hello, what's the password? Can I please? Nope, that's one guess. You've got two left. Team two are gearing up for the start of their shift. Welcome, everyone. What a busy day we're going to have. After a colourful night in Humberside, the custody suite is almost at capacity. So, 14 prisoners on the green side. Number 10, we've got... Um, he's got... Uh, just tell him to bring him back. We're busy. Hi, buddy, we'll pop down and see you in a minute. Yeah, we'll pop down and see you in a minute. <clears throat> he requires body mapping, um, which has been authorised. Hello, mate, are you suffering a medical emergency? Yeah. Yeah, what's your medical emergency? Yeah. If you buzz again and it's not medical emergency, I'm going to turn your buzzer off. Before I joined the police, I had a few different jobs. I was selling mortgages at one point, uh, and I worked in Magaluf as a holiday rep. Number 14, he's in for peewits and money laundering, and that completes my side. In a lot of ways, it is actually quite similar to being a police officer. But sometimes you are stopping people from fighting. 21, uh, he's in for threats to kill. You're dealing with drunk people on nights out as well, so it can be quite similar to working in here on a Friday and Saturday night. 23, he's in for deer-related harassment. That's a gentleman who's uh, seems reluctant to wait two minutes for whatever he wants. I think it's really important to be positive and upbeat. Have an awesome day, everyone. Yeah, you have one too, Sarge. I will. <laughs> I'm professional and I work hard, but I also try and have fun at the same time while doing that. <laughs> Bastard, I'm going to burn that thing. <laughs> Shit. Oh, God. You're just too easy, Ian. <laughs> Is that defib working? <laughs> You're all right, Donna. <laughs> Ian has the best ever reaction to the megaphone. <laughs> I got a really good view of it. Yeah, what was it was the arms. What was it? Said you liked about <laughs> if um, Ian wanted a career outside of policing, he'd be the man to get outside the car sales room, flapping away. <laughs> You're all cruel. <laughs> Humour is so important, especially on the shift that we work on. Because today is mad, bad and chaotic. <laughs> Sergeant Steve's first detainee of the day is a male called Ryan. To me, yes, please. Who's been arrested for assault. Have you any drugs or alcohol today? Yeah. What you had, buddy? Of... 
I've swallowed loads of drugs. Yeah, is that what you've actually done or not? Because it's likely to massively delay your time in custody and things well, like that. I need that. to go to the hospital. Uh, you might do. Well, I, I do. I'm nice. telling you, I've swallowed enough drugs oh, that I need to go to the hospital. Oh, right. oh, no, nice. she, unfortunately, she didn't... We don't always get honesty in here. When we're booking people in, they can tell us all kinds of things. If somebody's taken drugs, um, that could result in a medical emergency, so it's best for just to make sure that they're safe and well. Because you said you've swallowed some drugs, what I have to do is authorise a strip search on you to make sure you've got no other drugs on your person. What if these drugs burst while inside me doing all this? If, if, if the first, then I advise you probably shouldn't have swallowed them in the first place. He didn't appear to be under the influence of drugs. I suspect he's probably trying to play the system to get out of here for a little bit. I just find it frustrating that we could have the officers out there doing uh, proper police work. In there, they did the bastards. Only time will tell if he's having drugs in his system or not. We'll get you off hospital. I advise you keep him handcuffed the yeah, entire time. Yeah. If he is playing a silly game, I think it's going to cause him more inconvenience in the long run. If he start becoming aggressive, it will go to the back. And when he comes back, he'll still be investigated for the assault. It's not going to make it go away. Thank you. locked up in here. It's a constant battle and I think the best way to get through that sometimes is to have a laugh in custody. Can we get you again? Yes. <laughs> we take the mickey out of each other and some of the characters that come in here, and they do make you laugh. Here we go. Next to arrive in custody... No. 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 ..is regular Mika. A fence, please. Handling stolen goods. Mick has been in a vehicle that's been pulled over. Mick has been in a vehicle and it's been pulled over and she's been dumped around and stuff. You're all right. Um, curious. Is it? You got any arrow birds for me today? I might ask. Depends how nice you are to me. If you're nice to him, he might, he might just give you one of his arrows. We get regular customers, the ones that come in time and time again, and you get to know them on sort of like a bit of a personal level. You look after them. 43 years old now, and you know. And you're still checking on. yourself into here? No, What's I'm not on? checking myself into here. You twats are checking myself. When I've done something wrong, yeah, my old man's up doing that. With insane. the pleasantries out of the way, Ian tries to get his line of questioning back on track. Vehicle stopped by police. Mika's been in that vehicle. What's your name? I know you. What Mika is it? Ah. ah. Yeah, something like she was robbing her bag and the staff stopped her. She was travelling around the area trying to tackle different shops in, in the inside. Just keep everything in here for now. Can you just put everything back for us? Yeah, sure. The vehicle was searched, and so both uh, people were. Is there a bit of sound and had a stolen gun there at all, sir? So it's just boring shit. All right, me, Sorry, Mika, Mika. I don't, me... I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I can't progress this bit until I get the bit details from the officer. They know what my shop thefts are like. The thousands of pounds Mika. worth. Mika. You know, I don't Mika. think they put cans of coke Mika. in that bill. Shut up. <laughs> Mental health issues? Yeah, I've got bipolar. Have you ever tried to harm yourself? You know I have, but this baby's what's done 360 in my world. Good, good. Mika's a regular. Every time she comes in, she always discloses that she's pregnant. So she's either popping out a lot of babies or she's just pulling a fast one because she thinks she'll get trapped better. OK, Mika, based on what the officers said, I'm going to authorise your detention here at the police station. Oh, I want more than one mattress, please. I'm pregnant. OK. The detainees have a one-track mind. Some try and treat it like a hotel. I'll have two with a cheese pasta bakes, if that's all right, and some... Porridge. Two cheesy pasta bakes. And yeah. porridge. And a porridge. Yeah. You want and a partridge in a pear tree. Thank you. I mean, some of them we want to look after. Some, you know, they're not getting fed outside or they're homeless. Did you want two blankets, Mika? 
She is in a sad situation. I think she said she's uh, living in a tent at the moment, which is not ideal. Hopefully, we can get her housed and get a roof over her head. You sorted. Some detainees can pull on your heartstrings. Anybody at any time could lose their job. You know, you're just a payday away from being homeless. I'm going to get you those cheesy baits and a hot chocolate, yeah? Please, if you will. As much as it is irritating that people keep coming back, these people do need help. Could Mika have two cheesy bakes and a hot chocolate, please? All right, no probs. In the morning, Mika will be charged with handling stolen goods. So you go eating all them sweets at once and choking. But until then, she'll be well looked after by the custody team. All right, darling. I hope she leaves in a better position than when she come in. She's trying to sort her life out. Good for her, I hope she does. Only time will tell. It's lunchtime in custody, which means Jill's calf is open for business. 16 years of experience. <laughs> Did you ask for a breakfast? Yeah. Chocolate and your lasagna. Thank you very much. The custody teams serve the detainees over 500 meals a week, so they're constantly preparing food. I can do you any microwave meal you like. Oh. You can have cottage pie, sausage and mash, all day breakfast. Chicken korma, chilli beef, chicken casserole, like lasagna. You ought to write a menu out. It's on in my head. We used to come into custody and we'd give set meal times and now it's like room service. Tell me what you want to eat and I shall go and prepare it for you. Would that be a nothing? Can I have a steak? I'm sorry, I'm all out of steaks. Yeah. It's just constant. I want a drink, yeah, we'll bring you a coffee, we'll bring you hot chocolate. Can I have a curry and rice? Yeah, bring that. And then they want another one, and they want another one. Have you seen the mash? No. It's a brown colour. A few hours later, detainee Ryan, arrested for assault, is back from his hospital examination and he's still trying the officer's patience. So Mr. Lee said he swallowed a load of drugs. Whether he has or he hasn't, we don't know. How are you? Are you all right? However, at the hospital, uh, the gentleman was quite abusive, uh, and then he kicked a police officer. So you went off to hospital. What happened, buddy? Not a lot. Sometimes what we do here feels like we're actually babysitting people. Have they treated you for taking the drugs at all? No, I didn't take any. You didn't take any? Why did you say you did? Because I wanted to laugh. Because you wanted to laugh. So you've made things more difficult for yourself. You created extra work for officers. I don't give a shit, mate. You don't give a shit. Basically, he was lying. He hadn't taken any drugs. He seems to be trying to do everything he can to make the process more difficult or slower. Ultimately, I think it's, it's himself that he's delaying things for. Um, you know, we just want to get on with the investigation and deal with him and uh, process him for what he's been arrested for. Well, as far as I'm aware, when he was at hospital, you were kicking off and you have been arrested for a public order offence and assaulting a police officer as well, is that right? <laughs> you laughed. Do you think that's funny, bud? But he cried like a big fucking baby. Well, that'll be reviewed by the sergeant, well, won't it? here on his own with no fucking cuffs on and no fucking punch fuck out of him and then he'll know what assault PC is. He's just making things a lot worse for himself. I need a shit. No worries, I'll get the toilet ready then for you. Still unsure if the detainee has swallowed drugs. Is that toilet's ready for you, buddy? Steve has prepared the Custody Suites Drugs Recovery Toilet. Unfortunately, if he has gone to the toilet, then that's going to be a dirty job for somebody. I did mine last week, so it's somebody else's turn. Ben, do you know how to use the drugs recovery toilet? I want Would you like to learn? I mean, yeah, why not? Fantastic. We have to feed people, take them to the toilet, take them out for exercise. You're completely looking after everyone's lives. You're all right. And you're thinking, how do you function in this world? Got a window washer, we can see what's going on. Sometimes you just think, just grow up, will you? Yes, you're under arrest, but you don't need to act like a child. Fortunately, on this occasion, it looks like the gentleman's just wiped his bum and not actually had a poo, so... That's it, job done. 
But unfortunately for Steve, his babysitting duties are far from over. As Ryan is threatening the officers in his cell. Detainee Ryan, who's been arrested for assault, is threatening officers in his cell, so they have no choice but to cuff him. He's been handcuffed when he's been aggressive, so we can see his hands. He's still obviously having to use the drugs recovery toilet. Oh, yeah, you better take his handcuffs off so I can hold my cock and piss, eh? Like a good little bitch. I do really try and just leave my personal feelings at the door. But nobody should have to come to work and be threatened with violence or abuse. Uh, that's not what we're paid for. I'm calm now, mate. I'm calm. You, you, you do not want to see me angry. This is calm. And you have to just rise above it and be the bigger person. Just try and let it wash over you and just ignore what people are saying to you. Goodbye. I'm really concerned that if he is released, he's going to be a risk to uh, that victim. It is something Humberside Police treat as one of our priorities, and we'll use the, the full power of the law to try and prosecute those who are responsible for it. Just listen to my colleague, he's got some stuff he needs to tell you. So you're going to be charged with uh, using threatening, abusive words, behaviour like Ryan is being charged with assaulting his friend and an officer. Finally, last offence is an assault by beating. Now Steve faces a difficult dilemma. If we get to the point of charging a suspect, I've got a decision to make whether they get bailed off to court or whether I'm going to remand them in custody, which means keeping them in the cells. So it's quite a big decision and a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. Am I going to get bailed? No, custody you're going to be staying here to the court, mate, and that's because I've got massive concerns that you will go around and further assault again. It can be stressful. We're dealing with quite difficult situations that, you know, a normal member of the public wouldn't deal with and if anything goes wrong, the book will generally stop with me. But I'm comfortable with that, and that's my responsibility. As Ian is called away to court, Stuart, the custody's longest serving sergeant, reports for duty. Remember, <laughs> crime is a disease and you are the cure. Oh, I'm not the cure of anything. <laughs> <laughs> now that was Robocop, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Work is a pleasure at the moment um, and has been, to be honest, for the last 20 years. How many more months have you got left? Well, I have approximately well, 153 yeah. days left to work in Humberside Police. 153? And I... I'm not counting them at all. And what's that in hours and minutes? Oh, I haven't done that. <laughs> I will miss it when I leave, but now it's time for me and the wife to enjoy ourselves. Tell me what you're going to do when you retire, Sergeant. Nothing, Donna. And where are you going to do nothing? On a beach in Fertiventura. With budgie smugglers on or without? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to miss the people, I'm going to miss the work. It's what I've come to love. And when you know how to do a job, or you think you know how to do a job, and you think you do it well, then you always want to keep doing what you're doing. And how do you feel about retiring? I'm going to be totally honest with you, Mark. I shall miss it immensely. Yeah. Yep. Stuart's first customer of the day is checking in. There's your handbag. I'm out in it. Hang on one second. Just want to lean on that wall, lean on that wall. It's a 60-year-old woman who has been arrested for drink driving. Hey, look. You just want to stand in that corner for me and just uh, take a little load off. I'm Stuart, that's Joe. What's your first name? Bernie. Bernie? It's Bernadette, but Bernadette. It's Bernie, yeah. Okay. What did she blow, sorry, you, Joe? 108. What's the limit? 35. So you're a little bit over. Bernadette's been seen by the local public uh, in Scunthorpe driving a car over the roundabout rather than around it. Bernadette, this isn't a trick question, sweetie. This is so I can look after you while you're in custody. Have you consumed any alcohol or taken any drugs in the last 24 hours? Alcohol? Two, two glasses of wine. Two large glasses. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, this morning I had a bottle of wine. 
a bottle of wine this morning. I'm 54, I've seen a lot of things in my life. I don't judge anybody. When you speak to people, treat them as you would want to be treated is, is how I look at it. Any the mental health issues? Yeah. Well, what's that, my sweet? Suicidal thoughts. And when was the last time you had a suicidal thought, my darling? Today. Trying not to get upset. When I see people come in with alcohol issues, it's, it's really upsetting. And you just think, you know, what's happened? Why, why have you got to that point in your life? So, the next question's quite a painful one. Have you ever tried to harm yourself before? Yeah. What have you done and when, Bernadette? Taking an overdose, an overdose of medication. Overdose. Try and be strong for me. How long ago? Yesterday. Yesterday. It does touch me emotionally, especially if it's a, a female. I just see my mum sitting in front of me. My mum was an alcoholic. I lived with her until I was 11, until she self-harmed herself in such a way that I just felt I couldn't be there anymore. Bernie, are you dependent on alcohol or any of the substances? All right, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Would you say you're an alcoholic? Would you say you're an alcoholic? Yeah. At Birchin Way Custody Facility, Sergeant Stewart is booking in Bernie. It's nothing to be ashamed of, darling. Who's been arrested for drink driving. I am getting help. Good. Well, I've got people here that can help you as well, Bernie. So if we need some help, I'll get it for you. Obviously, Bernie's going through a few things in her life. There are issues that we're going to have to address with her. All right, Bernie, you take care, all right. Yeah, all right, see you later. If somebody is suffering from alcoholism, there is a driving force behind it. And my mum was affected, unfortunately, by the death of her daughter. But you either succumb to it or you drive past it. While Bernie sobers up in her cell, Stuart calls liaison and diversion. It's just going to be for the interview. Birch and Way's unique NHS mental health support team. We have a healthcare professional that's with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Anxiety and depression is massive in this town. We get a lot of people through the door that have got drug issues, alcohol issues. All right, you take a seat either side. The liaison and diversion team that ask them whether they need any help with alcohol, housing issues, and hopefully point them towards the right people. Mm. It's nice to talk to somebody because I don't have anybody mm. to talk to. Would you consider using them if we can get you some support? Yeah, there? I'd yeah. consider anything just mm. to get me out of the place I'm in mm. at the minute. I know it's a difficult thing to do, but you need to look after yourself. You know, it's day one of getting that extra support and trying to turn things around for you. Alcoholism, is, it's a disease, really, and it's about reversing that situation. It's an eye-opener. And I think it's time for a reason to make me realise that um, you don't find happiness at the bottom of the bottle. Having been charged with driving under the influence, Bernie's time in custody is over. We only ever really see the bad in here, but you often get one or two um, that are really nice people that have made that genuine mistake. Yeah, Please, yeah. me, I, I only wish I did have, but no, I haven't. So, last, um, one of them faces, yeah, yeah. one of them faces. One of them faces you like to eat, yeah. I've been told so many times. I'm definitely a people person. I think in this role and in this job, you have to be, because you have to make sure that you're there for people and you listen to them properly. Right. Put a wig on me and a dress, and well, I look like, I look, like I look like Mrs. Brown. Yeah. Or like the bloke out of Home Alone, the little fella. <laughs> Don't be rude. He does actually look more like him. <laughs> I feel very, very lucky to have found this role. I never thought I'd enjoy it as much as I did. Yeah, make sure you look after yourself. Yeah, All right. I like this little old girl. It, it's certainly a role that a lot of people don't enjoy. Um, but I love it. I love coming to work. Yeah. And when I go, I'll miss it.
As the sun sets, Stuart and his team clock off for the evening. Oh, it's a bit chilly out here, isn't it? It's a bit different. And a special night shift for Sergeant Jason begins. Um, <laughs> Happy birthday to you! <laughs> Celebrating his 50th birthday by working in custody. Thank you, thank you. I am going to turn into a grumpy 50-year-old, I think. Um, you brought your pads ready now that you're an old man. Happy birthday. They bought me some nappies. <laughs> For my incontinence, apparently. I probably could get them on, but I'm not go going on, to. Go on. <laughs> on your head. Is that how you're supposed to wear them? Like that? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> No. If you're all pulling in different directions, then this could be a, a horrible place to work. But we sort of see ourselves as a little bit of a family. Some of us do things that annoy other people, but that's how all families are, aren't they? We're like a dysfunctional family. Right, enough of all to work. Let's get to work. Boo. Everybody else in the police takes a night off on their birthday, except Muggins here. Before Jason can fully celebrate his milestone birthday, he needs to survive the night shift. Right, I'll take the first one that's in the airlock then. We have a adult male coming for common assault. He looks like he's behaving at the moment. <laughs> the latest custody detainee is a familiar face with a volatile reputation. All right, Ty. How are you? Yeah, not bad, mate. Uh, when detainees come in, you know, I always say to them, if you're respectful to us, you'll get treated with respect in return. Uh, unfortunately, not all the detainees go along with that. OK, and the first offence? Threatening um, a female with what she believed to be a bike chain. Bike Who chain? Who fucking bike, bike, bike chain? Where you come for that shit? Um, are you going to let me speak, then? Well, speak, then. I'm trying to, but you keep... Ty, you yeah. fucking shit to me, mate. Um, Ty's been seen to push around. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Okay. She's all right, so, yeah. When the arresting officers arrived, Ty barricaded himself inside his house. This is coming at you, son. He's got a weapon in his hand. With a track record of aggression towards police, he threatened officers with a screwdriver. Turn around and walk backwards. <laughs> to your left. Sergeant Jason must now make sure that Ty is not concealing any other weapons. I'm going to authorise a strip search. OK, there's a previous marker on here for conceals, Ty. Yeah, for... Well, then we'll go do that. We get... There is never a typical day in custody. The kind of problems we get could be someone who's extremely violent, self-harm, having stuff concealed on them. Right, we'll drop the case for us. Yeah, just right. He's got something sticking out. Really? OK. Ty, if you've got something sticking out, you've no. got mates, it needs to come out. What is it? There's nothing there. There is something there, or they won't be saying it. Turn around then. Okay, squat down. Okay, Ty, I can see something there. So are you going to pull it out? Because it, all it's going to do is prolong your stay here. I don't give a fuck. No, no, no. There's nothing there. Ty, give... He's a career criminal. He knows fine well that we are not going to put our hands up another person's anus because we will be assaulting them. Take his trousers up, put the handcuffs back on. He could have something up his anus, and if it is Class A drugs and that bursts in his stomach, then could perforate his bowel and kill him. So he's going to go up to the hospital and hopefully we'll get the doctor to remove it. Oh, Don't let him put his hand anywhere near his ass. Ty needs to be transported to A&E, but getting him there won't be easy. It's going to be a long night for you, boys. I'm, I'm going nowhere like it is, mate. You'll do as you're told, Ty? Yeah, I'm okay. you're me out with it. You are carrying me out with it. Okay. Yeah, right. and guess what? I don't give two monkeys. Right. Don't play it's it. It's not quite Fuck, mate. You do what you've got to do, you're yeah, and I'll do what I've They might need the next pair of hands up at the hospital. It's getting real difficult. You ain't walking. You think you I ain't give a fuck. You ain't walking. Your heart rate can race sometimes when you put in some sticky situations. Yeah, right. give me the best you've got now. Come on, son, let's have it. Unfortunately, this is what police officers have to deal with on a daily basis. He just wants to be awkward. It's him trying to wrestle back a little bit of control. All you're doing is prolonging everything. Oh, dear. Another satisfied customer. It's the middle of the night 
and Sergeant Jason's busy birthday shift is about to get even busier. How are you coming, guys? As a woman arrested on suspicion of assault arrives in the van dock. Hello, young lady. Why not? Well, you won't really, will you? Um, um, if you kick any officers, you'll be arrested for assaulting a police officer. We're about to book in a volatile female. She was kicking the cage in the van, so we had to use a bit of force and take her straight to her cell. I can smell alcohol on her, so she's clearly had a drink. She's not doing herself any favours. It'd be a lot easier if everybody came in, get dealt with, get released. Right, stay back against the wall now, speak. Okay. I'm going to see. What was your first name? You know, I'm fucking going to source me. Why should I source you? It's not our first, it's not fair. Just listen, just listen to me. Okay. Right, I don't want to listen to you. Okay, I don't want to listen. Can we get a female officer down here for a search? You smell like a piece of shit. Oh dear. Yeah, that was fun. Did she not wish happy birthday? No, no, I'm very disappointed. Sometimes discretion is better than valour. I could have stayed there arguing the toss with her for ages, saying, no, this is what's happening, this is what's happening. But it just wouldn't get us anywhere. Yeah, it's kind of the special day where you wish you'd taken the day off, <laughs> and you didn't. <laughs> what's your first name? Oh, sorry. I've been asked to come search you. Vicky must try to keep the woman calm while she searches for anything that could cause harm. Anywhere I need to be not particularly careful with? Are you hurting anywhere? No. no. All right. The intensity in here can be right through the rafters. You never know how people are going to deal with being in custody. So, yeah, you've always got to be ready for whatever reaction they're going to throw at you. You all right me taking your earrings out? But what's the reason? Because I don't know anything about you. You don't need, you don't need to sit Listen. here. Shut the fuck up. Don't speak to me like shit. Tell, I'll just ask you the reason. So don't ever say, because I'm taking them out. Tell me the reason you're fucking I'm, taking I'm them out. So you. shut the fuck up, speak to me like shit. I'm sick of it. You are not free. Why are you pushing me away for? Why are you away for? A lot of the time, they'll accuse you of talking down to them or patronising them. That's not me. I don't do that. I will always try and treat people that come in as human beings. And actually, in the long run, you potentially can get more out of them. I know it's not an excuse. I'm trying my hardest to keep calm. Okay. While Vicky tries to defuse the situation, Jason begins to work out why the woman has been arrested. Anyway, how are you, Brett? I'm not bad, Sarge. How are you? I'm good. It's my birthday today. 50. Never. It's her birthday as well. It's her birthday? Yeah. Is that why she's. Ah, oh, we're kindred spirits. You should have said something. <laughs> Okay, time of arrest. 1934. Okay, and the offence? Uh, Section 18 assault. Police responded to a 999 call from the woman's address. Emergency. Hi, we've got a stabbing for you. There's a person who's stabbed still there. Unfortunately, we don't know at the moment. The injured man has left the scene, leaving the woman as a potential suspect. To me, what they've said is, he's in the kitchen, picked a knife up, slit himself. Unconvinced by her story and threatened by her behaviour... I'm telling you to stop shouting right, and swearing. Don't, I'm, Go away. I'm stop. swearing. The police decided to arrest her. When the police told me that was get, I was getting arrested, I actually... Okay. Got scared as well as okay. freaks out. You've got anxiety's you gone through up here, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I can't yeah. explain what's what, but I feel too daft right. now, so it doesn't matter. So if we get your cuffs off. Mood swings are a, a constant thing in here. People come in volatile, aggressive, shouting, bawling, kicking off, and then two minutes later they're so calm. But it can go the other way as well. Well, I will always try and empathise with people. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to empathise with them when they're shouting at you. 
Well, she's left alone to calm down. Detention Officer Sarah tries to lighten the mood on Jason's birthday. Detention Officer Angry Dory. I thought it was Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I like the job. <laughs> she's going to hate you. No two days are the same. She's my stress ball. It has its ups and downs as well. It has its bad sides to it. And then she turns into that look. <laughs> now it's definitely angry Dory look. You get to know everybody on such a personal level because you spend more time with your colleagues than what you do with your own family. I think we've got an extra member of staff. Probably more useful than a lot of the other ones. Oh. Keep your gob shut, Sarah. <laughs> the fun you can have with a rubber glove. Yeah. I need to pack it in, don't I? <laughs> Hi, guys. Far end, please. Ty has returned from hospital after a bag of drugs was removed from inside his body. It was found out that it was a Subutex, which is a, uh, a substance that's given for heroin withdrawal. It's a Class C drug. He was arrested and charged with various offences, including possession of that drug. Come on, then, mate. The custody team needs to make sure that Ty hasn't taken anything from the hospital that could be used as a weapon. We can't guarantee that you've not got anything else there. Um, the handcuffs are going to stay on, but they'll go to the front. Maybe he thought he was going to get away without a strip search, and his demeanour's just changed. What's your not cocking out, yeah? So that instantly arouses your suspicion. What are you talking? I thought you know what I mean. You've been making threats, though. I've been making threats. Wait a minute, mate. Yeah, right, yeah. 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 listen. Don't go to fucking threaten me. It's been a birthday to forget for custody sergeant Jason. We haven't had the chance for a cup of tea. No. It'd be even better if we had some nice cakes to go with it, wouldn't it? Well, I may be able to help. Really sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> and now, repeat offender Ty is testing Jason's patience by resisting a body search. I still want two of you out, three of you stay. You do have to get hands on quite a lot. That's the best you've got, boys. So if anyone's thinking of joining the police, uh, you are going to be rolling round on the floor and you are going to be fighting with people. Well, sweet that, dude. I knew I knew I knew it. Ty finally calms down, and after a quick search, the team are confident he's clean. <laughs> what do you think? He was like an angry animal. Oh, well, uh... And now that everything's been sorted, he's friendly. Yeah, you're right, yeah, that, yeah. I lost my job, and if that's true, a shit job, but it made me do it. I'm going to go back to jail now. I don't want to go back. I didn't intend to go back. I can't seem to break away from it. I think it's quite sad that um, people are in that vicious spiral. A town like Grimsby is quite poor. There is a lot of unemployment, there's a lot of drug taking, there's a lot of alcohol abuse but you've got to have an element of responsibility in your life. And clearly for me, that, that guy spent his life committing criminal offences, getting convicted, going to prison. Please face forward. We want to try and rehabilitate people. Oh. But there's only so many times you can sympathise. And when someone's committing 50, 100 offences, you know, where do we draw the line? In the morning... Thanks, Ty. Ty will be charged with assault and drug possession before being returned to prison. Just emptying all the cells out. Getting them all nice and clean, ready for the next shift coming on. I definitely wouldn't want to stay here for the night. I would count the tiles, just something to pass the time. Oh, the easiest. There you go. Catch up on your sleep. 
I'm experienced. <laughs> You're doing all right, though, aren't you? I'm perfectly fine. Good. Sometimes it is like having a load of kids around you and they're at you all the time. Have you got any questions about your detention? No? OK. The hot chocolate was good. The hot chocolate was good. OK, I shall pass it on to the chef. The woman came into custody with a car full of belongings. It's now Sarah's job to search through it for evidence. It's going to take forever, isn't it? It looks like uh, they've been kicked out of where they live and all of the belongings have been shoved outside. So they've had to come here. I think it's everything that they own. Two pack. Cannabis, full of it. Bag full. Little scales. As Sarah finishes checking the bags, the woman's assault charge is dropped as the man at her birthday celebration has admitted to causing the injury to himself. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about earlier. I'll tell you what, you actually seem like a very nice young lady but last night. Yeah. Drink talk. Yeah. Well, obviously, I was a bit upset. I know I didn't do it, but I was scared. But I don't know why I was scared. I was just miles all over. I had so many emotions. Do apologize. It's all right, these things happen. We don't take it personally. Sometimes people will come into custody and they haven't committed any offences. I know, obviously, you had a drink last night. If you do struggle with alcohol and stuff like that, there are agencies out there that can help you. It was for okay. my birthday, but... Thank yeah. You. Well, I, I was here for my birthday, <laughs> so. However, we don't know that you're innocent, so shouting and protesting isn't necessarily going to help you. All right, take care. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. As the woman's bags are prepared for her departure... You make a great Inspector Beardy. ..the custody team can finally turn their attention to Sergeant Jason's special day. Shall we have one of these? Watermelon salted lager. Ah, oh, lovely. Ah, oh, the little glasses as well. Sorry, I'm welling up here. My wonderful custody team have bought me some of my favourite beers and some chocolates. I can't believe you bought me this. Gaz, can we give us a kiss, big man? <laughs> Thank you very working, much. Working a big oh, day older... isn't much fun. Working any day isn't much fun. We spend so much time with each other, it'd be a horrible place to be if you didn't get on with the people that you work with. So is this what we always do in custody, buy each other presents on birthdays? No, it's just... Because it's... it's 50 oh, real. Oh, thank you. The most important thing is having people around you that you can rely on. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that haven't got half of that. So, yeah, I suppose it makes me more appreciative. Has it been a good custody birthday today? Uh, oh. No, it's not. It's been fucking shite so far, let's be honest. <laughs> but uh, I've got something to drink at the weekend, but... Oh, really, thank you, Vic. Having been in the military and being away for most of my birthdays anyway, it's never really been a massive thing to me, but uh, the team really made it feel special. There you go, from my custody family. Can't be bad, can it? Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Oh. Back to reality. And if you or anyone you know has been affected by the issues raised in this programme, then please visit itv.com slash advice for further information. And we've the very latest news on the way next.